The miter saw is a tool used to transform raw materials into cut pieces of precise length, while providing the capability to make cuts at almost any angle. Let's take a look at our lesson objectives. By the end of this lesson, students will be able to identify parts of the miter saw, change the angle on the miter saw, change the blade, and safely operate the miter saw. Let's review a few major parts of the miter saw. The blade guard protects the operator in case of accidents. The table supports the workpiece. The fence provides a backstop for the workpiece. The miter lock and scale allows the operator to set the saw to cut a precise angle. The lock pin keeps the saw stored in the downward position. The power switch activates the motor. Miter saw blades come in a variety of sizes and styles with varying numbers of teeth. The blade on the left is a general purpose carbide tipped 28 tooth blade suitable for rough cutting in wood. The blade on the right is a 60 tooth carbide tipped fine cutting blade to provide a finer finish cut in materials such as hardwoods and moldings. The DeWalt 12 inch compound miter saw used in this video features a Freud Diablo 80 tooth carbide tipped blade. The carbide tipped blade provides not only a fine finish in wood, but is also suitable for cutting plastics and aluminum. When economy is a factor, stamped steel blades are available. These blades don't feature carbide teeth, but feature larger teeth for a quick rough cut through lumber. These blades are not suitable for cutting through materials such as aluminum. Because the high speed miter saw is a dangerous tool, let's review some safety precautions. First, make sure the blade is in good condition with no chipped or damaged teeth. Before operating the miter saw, ensure that the work area is clear of debris and extraneous materials and that everyone around you is aware that you will be starting the saw. To protect him or herself during operation, the operator should wear earmuffs and a full face shield. Keep your hands away from the blade while it's operating and do not stand in a direct line with the blade. Always make sure that the workpiece is secure and will not move during cutting. Clamps may be used to assist in securing the workpiece. There is no safe way to hold pieces shorter than 6 inches. If you need to cut a short piece, cut it from a longer piece of raw material. Secure loose clothing such as strings and long sleeves before operating the miter saw. Tie back long hair. The operator should hold the workpiece to the left side of the blade. The finished piece is on the right side of the blade. Under most circumstances, the operator should not use his or her hand to secure the workpiece on the right side of the blade as this poses a safety hazard. Before cutting, draw a line on the part where you intend to cut the material. This will help you line up the blade. With hands away from the power switch, the blade guard can be raised slightly to lower the blade close to the line drawn on the workpiece. A work stop can be used to make multiple pieces of the same length. Let's get ready to make the cut. On some saws, it's necessary to raise the blade guard slightly before lowering the saw in order to clear the workpiece. With the blade above the workpiece, pull the power switch and wait for the blade to come up to speed before lowering it into the material. Lower the blade into the material and move down steadily at a consistent rate until it's all the way through. Once through, release the power switch and wait for the blade to stop spinning before lifting the saw back up to its resting position. To make an angled cut, loosen the miter lock, pull the detent lever, and rotate the table to the desired angle. Notice the saw has predetermined detents for convenience, however the operator is free to set it to any angle between 0 and 48 degrees. Cutting aluminum is a similar process, however the downward feed rate must be very slow. Remember, to cut aluminum you must use a fine tooth carbide tipped blade. 
After passing through the material, release the power switch and keep the saw down until the blade reaches a complete stop. Geared head saws such as the Evolution Rage 2 feature a work clamp, unique blade geometry, and slower speed, which allows it to cut a wide variety of materials including steel and solid bar stock. Which of the following blades would be most suitable for cutting aluminum? A a carbide tipped 40 tooth blade, B, a carbide tipped 60 tooth blade, C, a steel 40 tooth blade, D, a steel 60 tooth blade. The correct answer is B, a carbide tipped 60 tooth blade. Aluminum must be cut with a fine tooth carbide tipped blade. Before changing the blade, unplug the saw for safety. Remove the screw holding the blade guard slide bushing. Press the spindle lock button and rotate the blade until it locks in place. Use a half inch wrench to loosen the spindle bolt. Note this bolt is a left hand thread requiring it to be rotated clockwise to loosen. Some saws have a washer and flange on the spindle. Ensure these items are not lost while changing the blade. Reinstall the blade, ensuring it seats properly on the spindle. Install the retention plate and reinsert the spindle bolt, rotating counterclockwise because of the left hand thread. While holding the spindle lock button, tighten the spindle bolt using the half inch wrench. It's important to ensure this bolt is tight so the blade does not slip on the arbor. Rotate the blade by hand to ensure that it's properly installed. Lower the spindle guard and tighten the screw. Reinstall the blade guide bushing and screw. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.